wanted to share today is a use case for the genetic algorithm in MetaTrader 4. Now, we've already talked about the genetic algorithm and we know how it works, but how can we use it to really, really boost our algorithmic trading system optimization process? So today I'll show you one of the ways I used algorithmic, um, <laughs> the genetic algorithm in MetaTrader 4. So what have I got here in front of me? Well, here I've got some optimization, which I was running overnight. And if I go to um, the settings, this expert advisor actually has a lot of parameters and I was optimizing over 20 of them. And the number of combinations for that optimization is indicated over here. So you can see that it's uh, not, this is thousands, this is millions, this is uh, billions, this is trillions, this is quadrillions, and this is a quintillion. So there's a quintillion, over a quintillion of um, possible combination of the parameters that I'm optimizing. And as you can imagine, you would need a supercomputer <laughs> to get through all of these in brute force. And even after you'd get all through all of them, you would still have so much results that then you would need another optimization uh, to optimize the results of the first optimization. So that would be um, pretty insane. And this is where the genetic algorithm comes in handy. So as you can see, the genetic algorithm um, really reduces the number of iteration it has to go through. And I am able to still optimize on the every tick model. And now if I go to the optimization graph, what have I done here? Well, I've actually run four separate optimizations for the same expert advisor, but every single time I've used the genetic algorithm. And what does that allow me to do? Well, let me, let me explain on a picture actually. So why do I run four separate genetic algorithms at the same time? Why don't I just limit myself to one? Well, let's say <laughs> in a multidimensional space, these are all of the parameters that are all of the sets of parameters that the expert advisor can have, the ones that we optimize. I know this is a bit of, um, this is my drawing, so I'm very proud of it. Um, <laughs> I know it's a bit, it looks a bit um, uh, unprofessional, I would say, but uh, let's bear with it. That's, that's the best I could do in paint with a mouse. Anyway, so these are, this is a multidimensional space where we have all of the parameters that the sex supervisor can possibly have. So how does the genetic algorithm work? So it starts somewhere, let's say one of them, let's say that top one that we just looked at on the right, it starts over here, right? And then it goes, okay, um, uh, let, let me randomly try this uh, parameter. Okay, that is better. So I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. Okay, that wasn't good. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And it gets somewhere. And through those 10,000 um, sets that it runs, it gets somewhere and it's like, okay, so that's probably the best one. That's the second best one. That's the third best one and so on. So you have some sets to choose from. Then you go... So, but the thing with the genetic algorithm here is that it's limited. So because it originally randomly chose to go this way and then this way and this way, this way, this way, this way it's never going to actually up, um, look through these sets over here or it'll never actually see these ones because they're too far away. Think of it in terms of evolution. Like um, uh, the human species, right? It went this way, this way, this way. Like maybe those are the Neanderthals or parallel there was um, Homo sapiens and eventually we ended up with Homo sapiens. But you would never see a human evolve into a giraffe, right? So if you got a giraffe here or a human evolve into a tree or, you know, so, some other form of life over here because completely, completely different evolutionary pathways and it's too far away f to ever happen. But you know, maybe what you're looking for in this particular say, case is a giraffe, not a human. So that's why I'm running four to, um, like, I'm not going to get everything, obviously, because there's way too many, it's quintillion, but with four, I'm uh, quadrupling my chances of getting uh, what I want. So let's say um, the second one will run from here. It will randomly start here and it'll go here, it'll go here, it'll go here, it'll go here. And it'll, and it'll actually then go this way, 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 it'll come here. So then it'll say, okay, so this is actually the best set. And maybe this is the second best, this is the third best, best and so on. Um, let's have a look at another one. And then maybe this one will start here and then it will go like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, uh, like that, like that. I don't know, somewhere, maybe it'll end up back here and it'll say, this was the best set. This was the second best, set, the third best. Kind of, you get the picture. So I'll just draw the fourth one for completeness sake. So maybe it started here, then went this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And then it actually went on the same pathway and it found this one to be the best set, second best, and maybe third best, right? Um, so 
by having four genetic algorithms running at the same time, I'm really improving, increasing the chances of finding diverse parameters. So um, this one, one genetic algorithm, what you'll find is it generally, once it finds a profitable way, like it sees that, okay, so maybe stop loss of 36 is profitable. I'm going to stick to stop loss of 36. It'll rarely jump away from 36. It'll go 37, it'll try 35, but then it'll see that 36 is kind of a uh, local extremum. It's a local maximum and I'll stick to it. And in the end, everything that this, top, this um, genetic algorithm was optimizing will, or more so of the parameters, will be with a stop loss of 36. Whereas maybe you're not interested or you're more, you know, you want a higher stop loss. That's why when you run four, maybe this genetic algorithm will actually find a stop loss of 72 or 84 or whatever. And that way, you it will be optimizing around 84, which can also be a local extremum. And, but they will never cross because this is a local extremum and this is a local extremum, uh, a local maximum for the stop. Well, it, it's, um, it yields the uh, prof, a maximum of profit f around that stop loss. And this stop loss yields a maximum of profit around that stop loss. So um, if you visualize the graph for, uh, let's say, stop loss, since we're talking about it, let's, uh, let's draw in another color. So probably let's do what have we, we not done yet? Orange, right? So if you've got... Uh, this is your profit. I once again, I apologize for the very, very ugly drawings. That's your profit and that's your stop loss. Maybe you've got your stop loss like around, what did we say? 36, right? That's your profit goes up and then it's like, like it's pretty low, pretty low. And then, all right. So let's say your 36 is over here. Your 84 is over there. Um, so that genetic algorithm, the green one, what it found was that 36 is good. And it tried to go left, it tried to go this way, it tried to go that way, but it found that 36 is really good and we're going to stick with 36. And what the other one found, this red one, was it found that 84 is actually really good because it randomly started closer to 84 and it couldn't find anything better around 84. So it'll stick to 84. And that's how the genetic algorithm works. So um, if you just launch one, you might find yourself stuck at one of these local extremums for profit and not being able to find other parameters. That's why personally, I prefer to launch a couple of genetic algorithms at the same time. In this case, you saw four of them running. And that's what I normally do because for me, I've calculated four maximizes my um, utilization of my uh, machine, my computer. So I can launch it overnight and because I don't need the computer, it can all completely be dedicated to optimization. And that way, um, all of the resources are, resources are um, utilized. If I launch five, kind of like they're sharing and the optimization won't be complete by morning um, or or the computer will crash. <laughs> so one of the one of the two things will happen. So there you go. That is why um, I run four genetic algorithms at the same time. And that is one of the use cases for genetic algorithms. And just to, you know, have a look at the results, um, you can see here that the starting balance was 10,000. And you can see that the genetic algorithm did a great job. It it increased from like, some some of them went down. As so what we saw in that lovely picture that I drew, some of them went down, some of them went up. But generally, you can see this curve is going up. So um, this is the final balance on the account. And you can see that overall, it is like, it got me to results where I can be earning um, 17,000 or it can be earning $7,000. And this is a period of 36 days, right? So 36 days and this expert advisor conducts maybe about, ideally I wanted to conduct over a hundred trades in 36 days, but that's a completely different story. You know, that's my preferences and, um, you know, statistical significance and th things like that. What we're talking about here is genetic algorithm. And you can see that in this case, it got up to $7,200 of profit here, 6,800. Uh, here it's about six, maybe about seven thousand dollars of profit. Here's about six thousand. Uh, what is it? About another seven thousand. And you know, then I will go into the results and I will look through all of these parameters. I will look through all of them and I'll be like, okay, so what am I interested in? All right, so am I interested in maximum profit? Yep. So there you go, seven thousand five hundred. Right, that's the total trade. Those of you who know me well know that probably I might go for total trades, right? I will go for total trades and I'll be like, okay, so even there's less profit here and a higher drawdown, but I can see that there's more total trades. So I will still investigate that one because for me, it is more statistically significant. But once again, that's a whole different story. Um, the, the, main, the main takeaway from here is that uh, the genetic algorithm 
uh, works um, works pretty well. And but if you don't want to get stuck at a local extremum of one of your or multiple of your parameters, if you want to explore a bit of just like a diverse range of options, then uh, a way to solve that problem is to look at several genetic algorithms running in parallel and make make sure that they don't crash your machine. So there we go. That's all for us for today.